God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save except for Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Praise God. You know what? That's the simplicity of the gospel of Christ right there. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If I could say anything to you tonight, I want you to know that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And He died for your deliverance. And He was taken to uh, the whipping post for our healing. And His body was broken for your healing and for your deliverance. And I want you to know that. That's about as simple as it gets. If I could just allow you for a moment to see Calvary's cross, my mission tonight is complete. Praise God. You can be seated tonight. I'm going to continue reading here. And Paul continues to admonish the church. He says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but a demonstration of the Spirit of God and of power. I want you to know that God put the Spirit in the church for a reason. He put His Spirit in the church in order for us to witness to the world the excellency of Jesus Christ and the crucifixion of our Lord. That our faith, he said, because he said, I won you over by a demonstration of God, not of myself, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men or myself, but in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, Yet not the wisdom of them of the world. Here's what he said. I speak wisdom to those who are elders in the church. They're mature in their understanding. He says, I speak different things to them. He said, and he says, even the hidden wisdom, which is the plan of salvation, okay, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. God ordained the plan of salvation, talking about the crucifixion of Christ. He's referring back to verse number two. He says, number eight, he says, which none of the princes of this world knew. The devil did not know about the mystery of God. He did not know about the plan of salvation. He didn't understand it. And that's what's so powerful about this message tonight. And the title of my message tonight is The Devil Did Not Know What Was Coming. The devil didn't know what was coming. <laughs> Praise God. But as he says, not, none of the princes of this world knew. For if they had known the plan that was hidden from the beginning of the foundation of the world, he says they would not have ever crucified the Lord of glory. But as it's written, he said, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. That's an awesome promise tonight. But God, everybody say, but God, has revealed them, those hidden things, unto us by his Spirit that he put in the church. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knoweth these thi- the things of man hath saved the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. N- now we have received not the spirit of the world, not the spirit of darkness, but we have received the spirit of God. Praise God. Verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teach comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god everybody understand that the man of carnality the dark man the one that sits in darkness that man the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him remember when i was in the world i used to look at the things of the lord and i used to think they were foolish That's what he's talking about. You guys act foolish. I used to say that until I had the understanding and I was no longer walking in darkness and I realized that actually the people at the football games act foolish. (laughs) Hey, they go all crazy and nuts and do all those things, jump stands, get into fights, take their clothes off because a guy's carrying a piece of rubber across the field. And we're in here with at least a sane mind, okay? 
worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and those same football fans will come in here and say, you guys are foolish, and let me just declare to you the word of the Lord. That the carnal man says that the spiritual things are foolish, but the spiritual man says, no, I understand those things. <laughs> Praise God. Verse number 15 says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet himself judgeth no man. For, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we, he says, have the mind of Jesus Christ. Praise God. The Lord is good isn't he praise God darkness was on the earth covered the earth the earth was in complete darkness since the fall of man in the garden there was a darkness that covered the spiritual man there was no light that was there there's no light at all that was there there, there was gross sin in the world the world was lost without a savior until the day and we've been talking about this all through december that the light of jesus christ the light of god the glory of the lord entered into the world and the bible says that the creation recognized it the creation bowed itself to it and creation admit uh, submitted itself to the authority of the light the same light that created all of things came into the world and we saw it as a baby child in Bethlehem. But the Bible also says that the creation saw it, but the people did not see it. The people were still in darkness. They thought, that though the world did not recognize it, it was absolutely, I'm sorry, though the world and the people in the world did not recognize the light, the Bible also declares to us in John 1 and 5 that the darkness absolutely knew that it was here. Creation knew that it was here, and the devil knew that it was here. He recognized it. In fact, John 1 and 5 says the light shined in the darkness, and darkness could not overtake it. There was a resistance that happened. As soon as that glory light fell from heaven and came into Bethlehem, there was something that happened in the darkness that they tried to resist and they tried to overtake. But the Bible says they couldn't. They had no power over it. In fact, Jesus, when he began his ministry, he began walking around. He was casting out devils and he was doing all of these things. He walked up to some devils and, and they said, Have you come to torment us before the end of the judgment? And he said, Absolutely I have. I am here to torment torment you and I have taken dominion over you and there's nothing you can do about it. Darkness absolutely knew that the light showed up. Hallelujah. The devil knew who he was and he knew he had no power over his name. The disciples even went out and cast out devils in the name of Jesus but, the, but they tried they thought in their heart that they could just kill him. The devil thought, hey, I'll tempt him. And when that didn't work, he thought maybe he went back and had a little meeting with the hounds of hell. And he said, hey, how are we going to get rid of this light? How are we going to put out this, uh, this flaming fire? And I'm sure they had a little meeting that said, oh, why don't we just crucify him? The, but the Bible says that the demons crucified. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory had they known the plan. Praise God. The devil's job, I want you to know, is to snuff out the light. Ever since this day, his job changed to snuffing out the light. That's his whole purpose in life now. He's, i got to extinguish this light. Keep the world in darkness. Why? Because the devil and the people in sin always love darkness because our deeds are evil. And we don't want to bring our devil, evil deeds into the light. And so we like darkness. And so the devil's job is to keep us in darkness. But as we just read in 1 Corinthians 2 and 7, it says, But we speak the wisdom of the mystery of God, even the hidden things, even the hidden plan of God, which none of the princes of the world knew. Had they known it, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. The plan was hidden from Satan all the way at the dawn of time. That means, that tells me that Satan didn't even understand what God said in Genesis 3 and 15. He says, hey, the seed of the woman is going to crush your head. He didn't have a clue what he meant. Wow, that's neat. We'll see that. I don't know what he meant. And here's Jesus walking around and they can't even figure out what's doing, what's happening. So they, they, they devised this plan. Of course, it's always the plan of God, right? They probably thought their plan was coming together, and it wasn't their plan at all. They thought, man, it's working out. Man, another victory for the demons. 
They, they got him into a, a mock trial there. They're beating him up. They're checking it off their list, you know. It's all God's plan. You guys go ahead and think all you want. Send him to Calvary. And there he is hanging lifeless, suspended in air. The spirit of the Lord, the light that once entered humanity, left. The body now left as a lifeless lamb of God dies and the body slips away into darkness. Creation then at that point laments that its creator slipped out into death. Spiritual darkness came across the world once more and physical darkness even as the creation lamented over the death of Jesus Christ. This whole, all of the world says the, 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 the land all over Calvary became dark even in the middle of the day. The Savior now dead, they take him off the cross, they wrap him in grave clothes and they break, bring him to a borrowed tomb and they put him in the ground and the, and the tomb stone is rolled in place, sealed now forever and the devil rejoices the demons have a victory party and they think they did it they figured it out we won we killed the lord of glory i don't know what they must have been thinking i know satan's smart i know he is so there had to have been something inside of his heart that would say i don't not sure it looks too good to be true. Wouldn't you think? I don't have scripture for that now. I'm just saying. But on the third day, on the third day, the ground around the tomb began to shake. And in the spiritual realm, it was an earthquake. And the tomb was rolled away. The stone was rolled away. And Jesus Christ, that same spirit that that received him in, the, in, the, in Bethlehem, that same spirit that was with him, entered in and rose him from the dead again, and light came out into the world once more. And he came out victorious. Uh, praise God. The Bible says that, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? In other words, devil, where is your sting now? Where is your fangs now? You think you did something great? Oh, but it's not. You failed. You failed miserably. He said, hey, there is no victory in the devil's kingdom tonight. He says, because I am risen and death has no, oh, no sting anymore. And victory is all in me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then something happens. That Jesus walks to Bethany. He walks out, as the Bible says, as far as Bethany. He's got his little guys with him. And he says, guys, I've got something for you. I've got to tell you something. I'm leaving again. I'm going away. And there he ascends into heaven and they watch it happen. And the same spirit that raised him from the dead, the same spirit, the same light, the same glory, leaves earth again. And here we are in darkness. Complete darkness. Fear struck these men. Absolute fear. But I want to roll the tape back just for a moment. Because in Matthew chapter 3, verse number 11, the prophet said these words, John the Baptist. He said, now boys, I'm here baptizing you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is way mightier than I. And he's, whose shoes I am not even worthy to bear. And he is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. And he will gather his wheat unto his garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You see there was a prophecy that went forth right here. That the devil didn't even understand. And didn't know what was coming. But when he left Bethany. He said boys I want you to go to Jerusalem because I am going to give you the Holy Ghost. He said, you are going to receive power and when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and then he said, into the uttermost parts of the earth. You see, I'm going to leave the world in darkness but I'm going to come back and I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
Hallelujah. And the devil didn't see it coming. I don't know if there was a rejoicing that happened, but I imagine there was a complete silence in the devil's kingdom wondering what was going to happen. What's Peter doing? What's John doing? What's Mary doing in the upper room, guy? What are they praying for? I don't know, but it's something's coming. I can feel it in the supernatural. I can feel it in the spirit realm. I don't know, Satan. I don't know, Lucifer. What's going on? And then suddenly... And then suddenly, darkness fleed, and the light came back to stay forever. And the Holy Ghost fell upon them, and they began to speak with tongues and magnify God. And the devil didn't see it coming. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it wasn't landed upon one, it wasn't on two, but it multiplied itself this time. It didn't reside in just one man. It didn't reside in just two. It said all 120 received it. The light sat upon each of them as a fire, and it filled all of them with the light of Jesus Christ. The glory of God now fills the church. The light came into the world and darkness could not overtake it. It couldn't kill it. It couldn't bury it in a borrowed tomb and it couldn't hold it off because suddenly there came a sound from heaven and a rushing mighty wind and that may not mean anything to us but to the devil that means everything. His kingdom is demolished. His kingdom is absolutely squashed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead filled Jerusalem. 3,000 souls were converted that day. The the conversion of fire changes man. I want you to know that tonight. The conversion, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire is not just, hey, some kind of a blessing that we get and we speak in tongues. No, the conversion of fire changes man. It has to. Hallelujah, or it's not of God. It burns away the desires of your flesh. It it changes from the inside out. It's not like the old religion that they were used to and that they could change their clothes and they could all of a sudden become who God wanted them. No, this, this Holy Ghost, this light, this religion says, I'm changing you from the inside out. I'm going to start that fire on the inside and then it's going to come on the It's going to burn into the hearts of man the statutes of the Lord while burning away the chaff of carnality. Somebody needs to say, oh God, I want you to consume me tonight with the fire of chaff. I want you to burn away all the man, all the carnal man that is in me. I want to be able to say old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The fire of God has consumed me. The fire of God has changed me. Hallelujah. Fire, when it burns, changes everything that it touches. The object that's being consumed changes its very nature and becomes something completely different. Even its chemical makeup changes when it consumed with fire. The look, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't smell the same. The size changes. It gets a little smaller, doesn't it? The shape changes. You know, you ever see fire burn something away? It just melts away before your very eyes. True fire conversion will affect your life so greatly and so and so dramatically that the Holy Ghost will change the man in the way that he walks. It'll change the way he talks. It'll change his life. It'll change the way they dress. It'll change their desires, change their passion, and change their character. That's true fire conversion. Ezekiel 36 and 26 says, In a new heart I will give to you, and a new spirit I will put inside of you, and I will take away that old stony heart of flesh out, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgment, and you will do them. That's the Holy Ghost conversion. He said, I'm going to take that old heart out, that old black heart, that old heart that loves darkness, that old sinful heart. And when I give you the Holy Ghost, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to give you a new heart. That new heart means the desires of a man's mind and his soul and his body changes. Hallelujah. But it not only changes the man, the Holy Ghost and the fire of God does not only change the man, but it changes the atmosphere even around the man. Hallelujah. 
Jesus built his church on the foundation of a fire-breathing, light-shining, Holy Ghost-filled church. His purpose was not only to die on the cross. His purpose was not only to answer the sin question. His purpose was not only to come and to seek and to save that which was lost, but his purpose was to put his light into a church that would ultimately defeat the devil on the planet. He said, I'm going to put an arsenal on the place that the devil lives, and he's not going to be able to withstand against it. The gates of hell will not be able to stand against the light that I put in the world. That's the church of God. Hallelujah. He said Satan's kingdom would be destroyed by this church. His strongholds would be brought down and captives would be set free. Hallelujah. When it hit... On the day of Pentecost, the devil didn't have a clue what was coming. The light was so bright. The light was so glorious. And the light spread like wildfire. And there wasn't anything he could do about it. It first started in Jerusalem with 120. And then it flew over to 3,000. And then it went into into Judea. And then, oh no, it's over into Samaria now. Can you see the devil trying to hold back? Oh no, here comes Philip. Here comes Stephen. Here comes these guys full of the light, full of the Holy Ghost. And they came. I got to move. Come on, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Fall back. Hallelujah. And then they take it to Samaria. And then they don't stop there because he's there. Here, here's the devil. He, he's got the water. And he's trying to pour on the water and trying to snuff out that fire. And they called it persecution. But let me tell you something. For the church that is baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Persecution is the water that turns to jet fuel when you pour it on the church. Hallelujah. Just like in Elijah, he said, boys, I want to give you a spiritual lesson. He says, I'm going to call fire from heaven. He says, but, and it's going to consume this altar. He says, but I want you to bring me some water. What? Yeah, douse it with water. Go ahead, it's all right. And so all the prophets of Baal came and they, lo- they loaded that dude down with water and they put 15 gallons and, and 45 gallons, however many gallons. They, they dug a trench, right? He says, dig another trench. And they pour all this water on it and they said, any more? He says, is there any more water in Jerusalem? They say, bring it all. And they doused this dude with water and there's Elijah looking up to the light and he says, light, would you please consume this with fire? And fire came from heaven. The Bible said it not only consumed the sacrifice, but it consumed all the water. The devil cannot put out the fire of the Holy Ghost in the church. The devil can't stop the church. Now he can stop individuals, but he will never stop the church. God instituted the church to be eternal. God instituted the church. He said, once it's there, once I bring my spirit down there, it's there forever. It's never leaving. I'm always going to have a church full of the Holy Ghost. Somewhere. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 6 and verse number 10. I want you to know something. That the Holy Ghost and this light affects everything around it. It's explosive in nature. Acts 6 and 10 says and when, when Stephen was there full of the light, he was full of the Holy Ghost, and he began speaking to these people, and he began speaking to the, the Luciferian thinkers of the world, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they were not, the Bible says, they were not able to resist the wisdom of Stephen and the spirit in which he spake. There wasn't any Holy Ghost. They couldn't, they, they couldn't snuff it out. They couldn't resist it. Because the Holy Ghost has power, and the, your Holy Ghost has the same power today that it did then. Religious systems all of a sudden began to fall. Faithless, ritualistic religion was replaced with boldness in God's word. A strong desire for truth began to infiltrate all of Judea and all of Samaria. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, something happened that never happened before. That light that, was, that used to just be there in the Galilean hills and the land of Ju- Jerusalem and the, and the surrounding counties and areas, it went someplace else. And the devil said, oh no. It went to the uttermost. It went past. It went beyond what our minds could even imagine or even think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As it is written, he says, we already read it. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor either entered into the heart of man what God's plan is for his church. Hallelujah. 
the true fire conversion, it knows no boundaries. It pushes every limit. It drives back the darkness and it has no limits. Praise God. But as it is written, I'm going to read it again. Eye has not seen, nor ear hath heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed to us by his spirit, by his light. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For, we, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. The spirit of the Lord gives every thing to us through the Holy Ghost. Stand with me tonight. I'm closing. I'm done. It was five to six and I had to stop typing. But if I was going to say anything to you tonight, I want you to know that the Holy Ghost, you have power in the Holy Ghost to overtake the devil. The devil has no hold over the church that is full of his spirit. This city, the demons of this city cannot stand it that we're here. We're, 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 plucking, we're plucking them from, from, from his hand every day. We have assembled here in the last few days and we assembled an army and we assembled an attack plan. And I want you to know that the devil cannot even stand where we step because we are full of the light of God. And the Bible says that light has dominion over darkness. Darkness cannot overtake the light. I want you to think about that for a minute. If this room were as black as you could get it, turn it, turn all the lights out and just put a blanket over it. If I lit a match in here as small as I could, it would light up the entire room. Darkness will have to flee. And that light can burn and burn and burn and you can try to make it darker in here, but the darkness will never put out the light. And I want you to know as the church filled with the Holy Ghost that you are the light of the world and the devil cannot put your fire out. You take dominion over sickness. You take dominion over death. You take dominion over the hounds of hell. You take dominion over all of those things. You take dominion over uh, addiction. You take dominion over all of those things. Take dominion over your family. Take dominion over your territory, over your street, over your county, your city, everything. Take dominion over it. When you go to a hospital, I want you to take dominion over every disease and every sickness that's in that building. When you step on the scene, I want you to know something. The devils know you're there. The only thing, the only thing, the only problem is if you don't know that, if you don't have that belief, then you have no power to overtake. You have to be persuaded tonight. You have to be persuaded tonight that neither death, nor life, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things past, nor things to come, no, no height, no death, nothing can separate you from the power of the Holy Ghost. Allow us tonight, Father, I pray, to receive the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives, each individual life tonight. I want to say this. If you do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the fire conversion of God, tonight you can get it. It is a promise for you tonight. I don't care how many times you've come up and prayed for it. I don't care if you've even re received it before. If you feel like the Holy Spirit maybe has not remained in your life, then I want you to come up and say, God, I want you to give me that power. I want you to give me the Holy Ghost power that has no limits. I want, to, I want you to give me boldness tonight, God, in the Holy Spirit that I've never had before, overcoming my past and overcoming my present and overcoming anything that would happen to me in my future. And I want to receive that tonight in the Holy Ghost. And say this with me. Say this with me. It's my promise. Everybody say that. It's my promise. 
and say this to God, you gave it to me. You promised. Isn't that what you say to your dad when he said, you say, you promised. You promised. Yeah, I did. And he's going to do it for you tonight. Lift your hands tonight. Father, we give you praise and we glorify your name. Father, I need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hey, there might be somebody in here who's been baptized with the Holy Ghost, but maybe you need to be refreshed in the fire part. Maybe that Holy Ghost burning needs to happen inside of